Now, as you can see, I've already coated the canvas just with a kind of a quick blue, little purple mixed up there. And then I've got a piece of tape there for my horizon line. So now we're gonna paint our sky, just our simple blue sky. Actually, I don't want it pure blue. I should go right over this. It's not quite dry yet. That works, that works. Now one other, well one other, one tip <laughs> is take your mister bottle you want to keep your paints wet. I've also got a little bit of my clear uh, foundation medium. And you can use that, mix that in with your paint, to help the paint to glide more easily. But anyway, now we'll just work in our basic sky. I'm not going to do anything too crazy today, just some kind of simple clouds, something fun, something not hard. <laughs> just there's going to be plenty to do later, if you know what I mean, plenty to do when it comes to the rest of the sky. This is dry, I'm gonna give it a quick mist with water. There you go, of course, once it's wet, you don't wanna do that because you'll end up um, making the paint sort of bead, bead up on the canvas, it's not a great thing. You get everything finished, blended while it's, while it's wet. Otherwise, you're gonna have to use your dry brush blending techniques, which I think I have videos on how to do that, but you can do that. I just don't need to do that today, not for the sky. We'll be, we'll be doing plenty of dry brush blending in the ocean, I'm, I'm sure. Now, as you can see, while I was waiting for my sky to dry, I put in a, a basic sketch. It was a good use of my time because I had to wait anyways. Anyway, now I've got, I've got some of our, this is just a quick light pink on one of our custom tapered round brushes, and I'm just going to work in a few clouds. This is by far my favorite brush I'd say in acrylic for, for any kind of clouds or blending. And you could probably use it for oil. I don't think I've ever tried it for oil because you don't really blend like this in oil. But anyway, this works out really good. Really, really good. Because now see, this is background's dry. I'm using a dry brush blending technique, which is just very confusing way to say. I'm trying to float a little bit of paint across this dry background. That's what I'm trying to say. See that? By stretching it out very, very thin, it looks transparent. You can see some of that blue underneath and it makes it look as though you've blended it with the blue underneath, even though you haven't and they're two separate layers. That's the secret to blending acrylics because see, you can do this all day long, never dry. Well, I mean, it'll dry, but it won't matter because you want it to dry and you can keep working with it even after it dries as you glaze on little bits more and more. See that? Oh, it's so pretty. So there's one cloud. You can just take your time, get all these little detailed edges in exactly the way that you want them. See that? Nice and soft as your brush runs out of paint, you'll get a softer edge. And that's how we build up. Oh, that's pretty. Wow, that looks good. And that's how we build up all these clouds in the sky today. Now I'm gonna pull off this tape and it just gives us a nice, straight horizon line, very simple. It's uh, it's not something I do every time I paint a seascape, but it definitely is something you should do if you have a, a fairly long horizon. It just depends on how much you have there to work with. But anyway, let's get a nice little sea green. Go, oh, that, that sap green is so strong. A little, little umber in there. I don't want too much. We'll mix that up. See that? What is that? Pretty good, pretty good. We'll see how that looks. I'm gonna begin just placing that down here. Oh yeah, that's just the beginning stages of it. You don't want the same color everywhere. In a seascape, it's important to have different, many different colors in the ocean because that's the whole painting is the ocean. Make sure you get plenty of colors. I mean, it seems like I shouldn't even have to say that, but yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I've learned from experience. It's easy to get in there with just one color and it just won't look right. So we'll get that turquoise kind of placed in and around. That's pretty, we can work with that. Leave your sketch intact when you're doing this. See what I mean? Leave that sketch intact, we're gonna need that sketch. Now, once that's in, we'll get some blue. That's our Prussian blue there. It's pretty. All right, let's see what that does. Oh yeah. Now remember, acrylics will dry just a little darker, as you know. Hey, another kind of a nice tip for you. Once you get your horizon line in here, you 
can actually let it dry completely, come back in with a with a custom taper round brush and you can soften it. Get in there and just dry brush some some mist over it. You know what I mean? Just just make it look softer because you wouldn't want that just sharp, sharp, sharp horizon line. Now in oil, I usually just take the blender brush and I'll just drag across it one time. But with acrylic, I just let it dry, then go over it. Oh yeah, look at that. Well, now I'm going to work more on the waves. Actually, I went ahead and painted a little more of the sea green, a little more dark green over some of the turquoise that I had. I thought the turquoise was a little much. What do you think? I think a, little, a little more subdued now, and we'll maybe save some of those brighter colors for the very end. I think that'd probably be a better thing to do. That's the way a painting goes. You put it in and you take it out. You probably have heard uh, other artists say that. I think just about everybody does it that way. You put it in and you take it out until you're finished. Things are always subject to change when you're doing this. You know, especially at the end. You've seen that fact. What was that recently? We did all the birch tree painting. Go back and look at that if you haven't seen that. But the birch tree painting ended up taking out a birch tree. <laughs> Ended up taking out a birch tree. Hey, speaking of which, let's take a look at your version of the last birch tree painting that I did. Remember to share using the hashtag on the screen or the special Facebook page there, and we'll get your painting in the next video. Oh yeah, look at this. That's looking really decent, really decent. A little bright there, but that's okay. Right up in here, maybe a, a splash against these rocks here. I don't know. We're just sort of going with it right now, today, right in this area. We're just making it work. It's not, not anything terribly, terribly crazy. That is a lot of white. Hey, you know what? We'll have to highlight sooner or later. So there you go. But it's not, it's not quite as turquoise as I had it though, and I like it better that way. Help that mountain out a little bit. There, that works. So anyway, we're just playing around with it today. Can you tell we're kind of just all over the place? And that's okay. See the lighter blue? <laughs> Don't you love how we're painting the ocean? I slide right up here with the ocean colors and start painting my mountain, my cliff face back there. But with these lighter blues, it'll cause that to recede a little more, go into the distance better. Yeah, that's nice. Oh yeah, so anyway, just keep playing with this back and forth, keep going. So you get it just the way you like it. It's pretty. Well, now I'm going to go ahead and create the, the little splashy foam parts of the wave. Oh, this is the best part of the wave, isn't it? This is where everything comes together. Actually, if you spend your time on this, kind of make it look good, I think you really, you know, the whole painting comes together right here. Very exciting. Oh, it's very exciting. See that? And I'm, I think this is like called scumbling. I should know. Yeah, it is. It's like scumbling. You kind of just mush around randomly. That, see that right there? I like to. This is water-based acrylics. I like to get in there with my finger and just smudge the paint. It's not going to hurt anything, and it just rinses right off. A little soap and water. Very easy to clean. There, kind of get some of that rolling up. Get a little bit of the crashing wave action. Everything needs to be relatively soft, really. Hmm, it needs a little, it needs a little more work. Right up in here, a little brighter. Oh yeah, there we go, there we go, look at that. It's really crashing down. That's better, see that's brighter? And we'll leave a little of that dark underpainting showing through, but maybe not too, too much. Get some of that mist, oh yeah. I don't think it's too early to actually begin working on the final highlights here. It's, it's about time to start, you know, shaping this wave here with these highlights. 
I'm kind of just trying to pay attention to, you know, where you, where you think the light would hit. And then maybe even go a little further and say artistically, maybe you want the light more in the middle. Keep maybe the bottom, the sides a little darker. That could be interesting. You know, I think if this was a, if this was a photo, you would probably just, it would be illuminated. It's the, you know, there's no, there's no trees casting shadows, you know. It would be illuminated all the way across. But for the painting, I think it would be pretty and much more interesting if we can kind of try to put some of the highlight just in the middle and then leave the, you know, leave the, the edges maybe just a little darker. I don't know how well that'll turn out, but let's try it anyways. There we go, see? actually takes less time than you might think to do this. Even though we're using this tiny, tiny micro filbert brush. I love this brush. I love the filbert brush and I love seeing it this small. I think it really, really works. I find I get just wonderful amount of control with it. It's got a nice long handle, although I'm not utilizing that long handle. I should be. I actually get a better, a little more organic looking stroke when you do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on the rocks. Just adding an extra highlight, building up these layers. That is the secret to getting... Hey, I did a video about that recently. Well, maybe a couple months ago. And what is the secret about getting bright highlights? How do you get bright highlights with acrylic? You put it on and it just it gets darker. You build it up in layers. Because not only will that make it brighter, it'll also just by allowing some of the original rock color to show, to show through, you'll get so much more detail. I mean, massive amount more detail. And you'll, your whole painting is oh, just gonna go to the next level if you do that. So spend just the next few minutes. I, I don't need to go crazy on this. Just popping out some of these rocks with this yellow and I'll probably go back over it again exactly the same way and create more definition. Now I'm going to place in several stones or rocks, pebbles, whatever, right in here on the shoreline. You don't need, at least I'm not going to do too, too many perfect ones, even just a few ones, that, perfect, you know, a few nice looking ones and then get in here and do a lot of sloppy ones and then altogether it'll look pretty, pretty good. If you try to place each stone in there just perfectly, oh, it'll end up looking kind of, kind of weird. So you go a little more randomly with it, I think it'll work out just fine. And of course, we'll also do the, the, the splattering that we always do for sand and whatnot. That works out usually real good. I actually need a little highlight on these rocks as well. I'm, I'm seeing they don't have that much, so let's get us some highlight there. Yeah, not going to go overboard, but all these little steps, they make a difference. You know, in the long run, they do, they make a difference. Just finished putting in this rock, and if I get it quick here, it'll be wet. And I can actually get kind of an oil painting effect. Or see, I kind of get my mid-tones automatically. That's nice, I, I like that. There we go. Plus, this rock I'm not quite as worried about. I'm gonna put some mist over it. I just felt like we needed one more rock. See that? And you can see why. It makes it a little bit more, a little more impact here, a little more punch. I like it. See that? A little more punch right there. That's good. A few more strokes maybe up in here. Just a lot of repetitive stuff on this painting, I admit. But some days are like that, and that's okay. There, that looks good. Maybe one more quick highlight. Glopping it on fairly thick. Actually, my paint is a little bit dry. I left my palette for a minute and came back, and it's fairly dry. So it's kind of giving me that clumpy look, and, and I'm going to just embrace it. There we go. Now we're going to paint in a couple of West Coast looking trees, kind of maybe like, like evergreen trees here on growing out of the rocks. It'll look just fine, I think. There. Pretty, pretty decent. I'm just, I've got the number four bristle brush here. That's all. In fact, almost too dark. Almost too dark. See, if you get your shadows too dark, you know, it, it looks too sharp, too harsh. Of course, that's too light. Somewhere in between. Somewhere in between. <laughs> we're just going to keep going until we get it. There it is. I found it. It was hiding. Uh, there it is. See, it's a little lighter. It's going to be dark when it dries anyway, so why start with it too dark? So this is dry now, and we can, we can go ahead and put our foam right out on top of the water here. 
honestly, I, I think maybe just a little more blue. I had it was almost too much white. I like that little more touch more blue is, is it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Maybe even a little red, a little purple. See that? You don't want it to be just white too much. Too much, just white there. That looks better. Oh yeah, that looks much better. Leave that a little transparent. Yes, that, I love that little bit of transparent. Now, make sure this is bone dry. <laughs> Don't do this unless this is bone dry. But you can get just a little bit of mist just down there. Didn't even want to risk putting it up there just in case. Because if it's not totally dry, it can make that paint bead up. But look, it, just by putting that water down there, see I'm able to do these blends just a lot easier. Yeah, that's, that's so cool. Nice, now this is all bone dry as well. Very, very good and dry. Hey, if you're unsure, if this is, you know, completely dry and it's gonna be okay, if you're not totally sure about it, what I want you to do is take a little bit of this foundation medium. It's clear, it goes on kind of milky, but it dries clear. Put that over it, it'll give it kind of a layer of protection. That's what I often do if I'm gonna do a lot of dry brush blending. You kind of use it as a, as a way to lock your layers in. Really, really good. Last thing you want to do is, is grind through, and you could do that if they're not dried and cured. So, just something to think about. Now I'm going to flick on some just, just white paint, thin down quite a bit. Now you could tint this white if you don't want it to be this bright, but for now I'm just going to go pure white because I've thinned it with so much water that by the time it dries, in fact you may need to put a little, a little water in your brush, by the time it dries, it's just going to be so transparent that you'll see the color underneath. So there's no need to actually, there's no need to, to actually go and tint it for the highlight. Now for the shadow we will. That's pretty. You might want to keep a wet paper towel standing by in case you get anywhere you don't want it. You can just wipe it off while it's still wet. That'll work out real well. But to me, this, this the last few things you do add the most impact when it comes to, to seascapes like this. The last things you do, oh, there it is, wow. You can build up a lot of highlight with this. See that, just stand here and, and, and do this in one little area and kind of build up another highlight, that's pretty. Now we're gonna just place in the last few details here using a liner brush. Actually got some fresh white, kind of mix up a nice purpley, bluish color. Make sure it's plenty thin. And, oh, there we go. We'll create just the last beautiful little foam patterns and details to this. This is we're gonna help kind of bring it to the next level. Really make it pretty. You can see I did a little more work here in the, the rocks and the sand. So we'll we'll work it just getting a little bit of this over. Just like that. Oh yes. This is dry. I'm gonna go ahead and mist once more. Oh, be careful when you do this. And that will help this paint to just, just kind of feather out a little bit like a watercolor painting would do. Well, that's about it for this seascape painting. It was fun to be able to layer so many different highlights one on top of the other and create a beautiful soft effect, even though we were using acrylics. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired.